And welcome to the Village Bartlett Committee of the Whole Meeting for August 20, 2019. I call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to again please call the roll. Trustee Cameron? Here. Carbonero? Present. Daney? Here. Cabrenia? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Here. President Wallace? Here. Uh, first item on our agenda this evening for the committee meeting is under Building and Zoning, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We have one item on our agenda, and that's more brewing. The petitioner proposes to construct an 8,063-square-foot sit-down restaurant on a vacant piece of property located in the southeast corner of Railroad and South Oak Avenue, 121 West Railroad Avenue. The site plan includes two outdoor dining areas, first floor patio and second floor rooftop, with small batches of beer being brewed on the property and those products packaged for takeaway. With that, Roberta, can you give us a rundown? Um, so as you know, this is at, located at the southeast corner of uh, Railroad and South Oaks Ave Oak Avenues and has um, always been part of the original village limits and has been zoned for business um, throughout the history of the village's uh, zoning ordinance. The um, property was the former site of the Lucky Jacks business establishment and the village acquired the property demoed the building and um, the lot currently stands vacant today. So tonight we have here more brewing as the petitioner who is requesting a site plan. As uh, Trustee Hopkins said, it's for an 8,000 square foot building. Uh, sit down restaurant with the first floor dining room, first floor patio area, a mezzanine dining room and an additional patio on the mezzanine level. They're requesting special use permits for a restaurant serving alcohol the two outdoor dining areas and the packaged liquor sales and periodically the petitioner is proposing to uh, package their new release beer products and sell these on site for off-site consumption the petitioner operates a successful restaurant in villa park with the same business model the proposed uh, building architecture and I, and I know this is difficult to see it's very dark but um, the building architecture is a contemporary style that includes a glass overhead door along the Railroad Avenue facade, which will incorporate an indoor-outdoor design element to the building. Um, it's going to be, consist of uh, black brick, which is the major building material, and then the um, air, small wall along the first floor of the patio would be a gray block, and then the minor arterial would consist of um, a composite wood, which is a walnut in color. They are asking for variations. And um, the first variation is for a 100% reduction in the number of off-street parking spaces. So according to the zoning ordinance, uh, they currently would be required to have 132 off-street parking spaces, and this is based on a floor plan that shows 368 seats and is also including a maximum of 25 employees at the peak shift. Due to the large number of uh, parking spaces located nearby, the staff does believe that parking demand can be accommodated off-site. Um, in your packet and on the screen is a parking analysis that we had our summer college intern uh, complete. He did a great job. Um, and on this table, it identifies, and in green are the uh, free parking areas, and in orange or yellow is the daily metro, so the daily pay spots, and then in blue are the permit um, spots. And in the chart, it tells you that in downtown, the number of parking stalls is 879. During the workday, so the intern went out during the day to <clears throat> see actual parking stalls being used and not being used. And during the workday and in the evening, so let me, let's see, back at the workday. Workday, we have 282 spots available during the day, not including the proposed parking lot that um, is in the capital budget across the street from this site that we believe might add another 22 spots. And then in the evening, that number increases to 591 open spaces. 
Any questions? <laughs> that's, that's pretty neat. <laughs> um, yeah, he did a great job. Uh, let's see. That's what we've got on that. And the, the uh, let's see, the, the other thing to keep in mind on this, he, he, although they have 368 total seats, that is including all of the outdoor patio seats on the first level and on the second level, which are seasonal. So in the wintertime, that number would actually drop down to 200, and I think the, over, the zoning ordinance would calculate that requirement at um, including the peak shift at 74 spaces required. So it drops down drastically for the winter months. Okay, the second variation request would be to allow for a one-foot building setback along the rear property line, which would be the south property line. They're also asking for a one-foot setback along the corner side yard, which is along South Oak Avenue, to allow um, one-foot um, setback. They're asking to increase the allowable floor area um, from the required 0 0.6 to just over 1, 1 1.08 and a 30% reduction in the open landscape requirement from 15% down to 5%. They're also asking to eliminate uh, the required uh, loading space, and staff has gone out and um, looked at along South Oak Avenue, there is adequate space for not only a loading space, which is what the former Lucky Jacks um, establishment used at, at that location, just west of the site, um, but there's also an area that's appropriate for an on-street handicap stall, and there's already a ramp there. Um, so we, we feel that would um, be sufficient as well. There's two handicap stalls in the lot across the street um, in, adjacent to Banbury. There's also three handicap stalls right across the street at the um, depot. Um, so the village was also lucky enough to receive a $20,000 grant from the RTA, um, which contracted with Coda Metrics to draft for the village a form-based code. And, and that's focusing on our downtown area. And this will actually be um, before you, we hope, on September 17th. So we'll go in a lot more detail of it, uh, about this. Um, form-based code then, but this code focuses on regulating the appearance, placement, and scale of buildings and how they relate to one another. And if this code were approved today, we wanted to see how would this project fit in with that. And what we found was that the parking requirement for this use would drop to 20 because they take into consideration that this is within close proximity to a transit. Um, you know, a train station. In addition, um, the corner side yard, uh, there would be no requirement for a variation for that, and it would eliminate the open space uh, uh, variation request as well. So with that, um, the staff is recommending forwarding this to the Plan Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, their review and to conduct the required public hearings. Any questions from the committee? Pretty thorough. We're going to ask for a variance in the back of the building. Is there going to be any, any place for the trucks to make deliveries? That would actually be located in that loading space on South Oak. There, there is adequate room there. That's where the former site had their loading as well. Um, and, and there is a space available. I measured it. So that would be around back. OK. And is there still accessibility to the other businesses across the property or that will be eliminated then? No, that and that is not on this property. That is actually part of the um, TAP. That access point, that parking behind, that is all part of the TAP's property. Okay, thank you. The petitioners are here tonight. If you have any specific questions. I'd like to see it move forward and get the comments from the Planning Commission of CBA. Uh, how, how no, it's good that uh, good to see you guys back in, and looking forward to working with you. Yes. <laughs> Everything finished up in Huntley, I hope. Uh, all of that. All right. Good. Fantastic. When this matter comes back to the board, do we really need to send it to the committee, or can we just bring it up for a vote? I think we just go straight to vote. Okay. 
So we'd go plan commission, if, unless they come up with, um, there's some pretty wise people on that board. If they see th something that we aren't looking at, then maybe we'll bring it back. But otherwise, we'll just go straight to board for a vote. You can get your uh, shovels in the ground. Is there anything we can do to help them send their customers to the right parking lots? We've talked about that with them, and um, we think getting the word out, signage, um, they said they would work with us on that, letting their patrons know, hey, you can park here. We've talked about um, their employee parking. We'd actually like to send them across the tracks to what I call the BP lot, which is the former Jensen gas station lot. That's our lot. It has 24 stalls up there. Why not? And yep. um, they, they said that's not a problem. Fantastic. Good. I think the neighbor, the neighbors would like that probably, for sure. You're right. Yeah. Excellent. All right. So we'll send this to the plan commission and the zoning board of appeals then. Okay. Thank you guys for being here. That's all we have under uh, building and planning tonight. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. Um, next item on the committee uh, meeting this evening is police and health. Uh, Chairman Carbonero. Thank you, Mr. President. We have one item to discuss. <laughs> Uh, on March 18th, 2019, the village staff sent out a survey to all residents currently receiving the senior water bill discount. And Joe, we're here to discuss the results of that survey. Thank you, Trustee Carbonero. Um, so as Trustee Carbonero stated, uh, the village staff sent out a survey to all of our residents that are currently receiving a senior discount on their water bill. This survey consisted of five questions. On our first question, uh, the key issue that we were asking them about was what specific issues and areas are the most financially challenging to our seniors? And uh, as you can see on the chart here, there's uh, close to 20 different options that were uh, listed out by our respondents. And the most frequently mentioned uh, financial challenges that they uh, stated were taxes at 43%, uh, utilities at 18%, and then home repair at 17%. Um, for our second question that we asked, uh, the, uh, that question was uh, what, should, what they believe the village should prioritize in the next three to five years. And when looking at that, again, the, uh, the number one issue there was taxes, again, at 39%, utilities at 10%, and then safety at 10% as well. For our third question, I actually put up a chart up on the screen for this one. Uh, the, uh, they were asked to rank the level of importance of four different issues. Uh, and then from most important to least important, important on average, they were ranked uh, taxes being number one, safety is number two, ability to afford home repairs is number three, and then mobility throughout the community is number four. Uh, for the fourth question that we asked, um, I've got a pie chart up on the screen. Uh, the number one, uh, this one was asking them what services our seniors find the, uh, the most helpful to them. Uh, and far and away, our number one answer there was the utility bill discount offered uh, here at the village. Uh, however, out of the 332 surveys that uh, we received back at that point, uh, only about 184, which is about 55%, uh, stated um, they did not respond to the question, and some cited that they were not aware of any other uh, services offered to seniors. So what the staff has done is we've uh, put together a letter that we're going to send, um, send out to our, our seniors. Uh, outlining some different services available to them uh, with contact information for Groot for their uh, garbage bill discount and then also uh, a lot of the different services offered by Wayne and Hanover Township and then also um, just to get all of that information out to them as well. And then for our last question we asked uh, what their uh, if they use a computer or and take advantage of any online services offered by the village and what we saw with this one was that 33% of our seniors stated that they do not use or own a computer. Uh, so that was uh, important for us so that we can more effectively communicate with our seniors uh, through different mediums such as the BART letters and uh, mailings and et cetera. Um, other than that, uh, are there any questions? I know I may have brought this up once before. Um, and I think instigating this is really important because we can get an overall view. I think this is a pretty good sampling of what people are saying. So control the controllables, right? Um, I know there's that group that you have um, that could possibly help with minor home repairs. Well, Do they sorta. do any of that? 
Sort of. I mean, I don't know, maybe the chief wants to speak to that a little bit, but I, it, it's, it's not, that, that is not the sole yeah. reason to have the group. It's more community-based. Uh, it is community group-based, and it's to help uh, residents that really have issues maybe with drugs and some other, you know, addiction type problems okay. as well. I mean, but it is definitely uh, available. There's money to some degree. It's just like, you know, that group that can't afford to mow all the seniors' yards, for instance, mm -hmm. that, that have problems with it. They just can't do that. But in a hardship case of some sort, then it might be worth pursuing, let's put it that way. Uh, but that wasn't the sole intent. There are also some um, other regional programs that deal with, you know, um, some home repairs, some kind of um, relief for um, utilities. Um, what we found in the past is that a lot of times our residents don't meet the minimum um, um, income threshold. Um, so while there are some of those programs available, our residents usually don't qualify for them. They fall in gap. Yeah. But um, the information that we're sending out, I think, is, is very comprehensive for what, what um, is available, and I think it will help a lot of our residents fit some of those gaps. Good. I would just uh, encourage um, us to take a look at some of the things that were brought up on this survey when it comes to budgeting next year. Mm -hmm. I think we already have, which I applaud you, uh, the staff, for doing that. You, uh, it was an awareness thing on some, some items. Yes. Some of the things uh, that folks didn't know about, they know about now, which is good, especially if they don't have the internet. How are they going to find out about some of these things? So. Yeah, and I think um, one, of the, one of the things that Brian identified was finding those um, very common um, repairs that our seniors are facing with aging homes um, and reducing those for seniors. And um, I think that speaks to this survey as well. Um, it really is kind of a first step. We're going to be heading into strategic planning as well so we can keep these, um, this information um, at the forefront. Good. Fantastic. Anyone else? That's all we have. All right. Thank you, uh, Chairman Carbonero. Um, with that, we will be adjourning to executive s session to discuss imminent litigation pursuant to Section 2C11 of the Open Meetings Act. Motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second. Step. Moved by Trustee Carbonaro, seconded by Trustee Daney. Will the clerk please call the roll? Trustee Daney? Yes. Cabrena? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Ranky? Yes. Kammerer? Yes. Carbonaro? Yes. We are adjourned.